God, God the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. The Father, our Creator the, of our life, Jesus, the Savior of our life, and the Holy Spirit, the Director of our life. We just thank God for life. Amen. And we know that we're in the midst of going places that we've never been. We're going to territory that we haven't been in before. But we know that we shall get there through the grace and through the mercy of the Most High God. Um, right before we get into the teaching on tonight, I just want to continue to encourage you that you have some unsaved loved ones, some loved ones that are in some type of bondage, some type of situation or condition. I'm just going to continue to ask you, encourage you to bring a picture of them and write their name on it because every time we come into this house, we lift them up in prayer because we're believing God for supernatural miracles and deliverance. Amen. Amen. I do not believe that God has called us not to be concerned with the lives of other people. God did not call us to be selfish. God did not call us to be just focused on ourselves. But we need to look and care about what somebody else is going through. Look at your name and say, neighbor, pray for me. Pray for me. Say, neighbor, please pray for me. And touch your name and say, neighbor, and I'm going to make sure I pray for you too. Amen. Because it is all about that we need to walk in the understanding of who we are. You know, I can't stress that enough. We need to do it. We need to keep each and every one of our members in prayer. We need to lift our sister Crandall um, in prayer. She's in late view right now, but we know that doctors are able to do only so much, but we believe in the healer. Amen. 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 I believe that if God was able to form me in my mother's womb, nah. he's able to take care of me since I'm out of the womb. Can I get a witness about it? Yeah. Yeah. And we just want to pray and just lift him up in prayer and let her know that we do love and we do care for her. So if you're able to go by there, she's in Lakeview right now, room 305, and we just want to know, just send our love. Now, if you don't believe in healing, don't go visit. Amen. 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 If you think people ought to stay sick, don't go visit. Amen. 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 Just go on to your house and just go on back into your little corner. But if you do believe in the power of prayer, you believe in the power of God's spirit, Go on and stop by and touch your grief with your sister and let her know that we do love and we do care for her in this trying time and in this hour. I want to encourage many of you that some of you experience the things that you're just trying to figure out what is and what's going on. It's going to make sense in a minute. Um, pastor's crazy, but he's not that crazy. Um, trying to get us somewhere that we begin to open up and we begin to express who God has called us to be. That you are not called just to be concerned with just little things. You are called to be rulers. You are called to reign. You are called to dominate. Somebody say dominate. I am called to dominate my life. And because I am called to dominate my life, I am going to put my life in the proper position where God can maximize my usefulness. Uh, he has to maximize my usefulness because if he doesn't, I'm going to become a hindrance to somebody. Yeah. I am not the way I help point people to the way. And at any time that people believe that I am the way, God begins to say, you are now a burden. You are now a yoke. And I will use my anointing to remove every burden. Oh, help me, Holy Ghost. And to destroy every yoke. It is hard. I'm, I'm trying to admonish you. Don't get caught up in people worship. It's really easy to do. Because if someone is helping you, if someone is a blessing to you, you do want to show them gratitude. That's all and fine in its place. But at the same time, we must understand that they are not the vessel or the vehicle of change. 
they are the one that the vessel, the vehicle is using to bring you to that place of change. Amen. So in everything that we say and everything that we do, we need to keep Jesus Amen. first and foremost. Touch and say, I love you, but I love Jesus more. Amen. I do, I really love you, but I love Jesus more, so I must, I must keep him, keep him first. And foremost, we're in the midst of a series called Manifesting the Kingdom. Somebody say Manifesting the Kingdom. Because God has not called us to live as those who have no hope. He has called us to live as people who understand the purpose and the plan that God has for them. You are not the ones that are going to be left out, hanging around, hoping and wishing for something to happen. But you are the ones that God has ordained to go out to move some things, to be a world shaker, to be a game changer. You are called to go out and make a difference in someone's life. Touch me and say, that's you. That's you. You are called to be a blessing to somebody else. But if we're going to be that, we need to make sure our life is in the place that God wants it to be. That he can use us for his glory. So last week we were talking about living free and we are talking about and dominating. Because he wants us to understand, I do not want you tied up to anything or to anyone that's going to bring you down. Help me. I don't want your will tied up to anything or anyone that wants to control you. But I want you as a believer to voluntarily submit your will. As Jesus prayed in the Garden of Gethsemane, he said, Father, let this cup pass from me. But he said, nevertheless, not my will, but your will be done. You are a real son of God when you can tell God, I have my own will, but I'll do yours anyway. Right. Amen. Mm-hmm. All right. Amen. Somebody <laughs> listen. You, have some, you want to do something else. That's right. That's right. But you tell God, not what I want, <laughs> but what you want. Amen. And that's when you start expressing his kingdom. Because you voluntarily Give up yours for his. We're going to be talking about breaking free from bondage tonight. Mm-hmm. You can't do some work up in here. You might have should have shouted a second ago. You might have should have rained a second ago. Uh, because we need to understand some people are going through some real issues. And they have some real things going on. And I don't want your weak prayer telling me to hold on. Your change is going to come. Just stay. You know, I, I, don't, I don't want none of that. You know, while you're telling me to hold on, I'm going through the most Amen. hell in my life. Amen. And I'm praying, God, can I get a moment of relief? Can I get a moment of things? Amen. Because you must find out when people are in bondage, most times they are not in bondage because they want to be. They're not in bondage because they want to be in bondage. They don't want to live their life being controlled by something else other than God. Amen. Amen. They don't want to be controlled by that liquor. They don't want to be controlled by those drugs. They don't want to be controlled by sex. That's right. Kind of do some real work in here tonight. But because sin is evident in every one of our lives, we are all subject to being bondage to something. And if you say you have no sin, the Bible says this what? You're a liar. Look at your name and say, I ain't calling you a liar, but if you say you ain't got no sin, the Bible... Yeah, 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 yeah. Because we all have something. Amen. So, 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 number one, don't judge someone because you can see theirs. Yeah. Yeah. 
going to try to keep this as G as right as I can, PG-13. But don't judge this one because I know that they sleeping around. And I know that they're homosexual. And I know that he's addicted to alcohol. And I know that they're addicted to drugs. And I can see the effects. But I can't see all you liars. Mm -hmm. I can't necessarily always identify all you jealous folk. I can't always identify the envious folk. Because we like to judge what we can see. Act as ill, because I had a friend of mine that, you know, I'm just honest. I ain't got time for it. He's talking about, I'm just trying to get them all off my church. Right. I said, who? Who are you trying to get out? Mm. I, I just don't want no homosexuals in my church. That ain't the will of God. I said, so you going to run them all out? Mm -hmm. I said, well, once you finish with them, can you now run all the liars out? <laughs> And, 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 and I said, once you feel with them, can you start running out the jealous folk out? Then I said, since we're talking about sin, can you run out the arrogant folk out? And I punch you somewhere in there. You're going to have to say, I got to get up out of here. Because you call yourself bold, you don't have to be rude. Amen. Amen. I, I, I'm just bold. No, you rude. Because you could be bold and still be delicate. Amen. Because boldness doesn't always deal with a stern voice. Amen. That's right. yeah. Bold can deal with showing someone you know going through, embrace them when everybody else is turning up their back. Uh -huh. See, that's bold. When nobody wants them around and you invite them in your circle, that's bold. Yeah. So let's not limit what we can do and why, because it suits our purpose. That's it. That's it. Mm -hmm. I can tell what a preacher is going through by what he preaches. Mm -hmm. And I can tell what he is struggling with by what he won't say. Because right. mm -hmm. mm -hmm. it's easy to preach against what don't affect you. Amen. But it's hard to stand up here when you battling with it every day of your life. Yeah, I can tell. I can tell. Why? But we got to break free. Somebody say break free. Break free. We started off here last week. Let's go there to Galatians, the fifth chapter. Galatians, the fifth chapter. I want you to understand something. I want you to. How many people got a journal this week? All right. We're making some progress. We're going to get you there. Touching that, so you need to get your journal. Because you need to start writing out that which God is saying to you, that which God is speaking to you, because it's going to be a source of strength and encouragement to you in this season. Galatians chapter number 5. Get to begin reading that verse number 13. Galatians 5 and 13, if you got it, say, I've got it. Yeah. The Bible says this, for brethren, you have been called unto liberty. You need to underline or write in your notes, liberty. You have been called to be free. You have been called to be free. You have not been redeemed just to go back into bondage. Amen. All right. You have been called to be free. Somebody say free. 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 But he says be careful with freedom. Amen. Only use not your liberty or your freedom for occasion to the flesh. Amen. He says you are so free that you can do things that are self-service. He says, but in your liberty have control that you won't give the flesh room, but you by love will serve one another. Because to serve 
has to have love involved. Mm -hmm. Because if you do it unwillingly, yeah. or if I force you to do it, right. contempt will manifest itself Amen. pretty soon. Amen. You'll do it, but you'll be angry. Mm -hmm. You'll do it, but you'll be hostile. Mm -hmm. you'll, you'll do it, but you'll find a reason why you shouldn't and why I, it just aggravates. They just get on my nerves. Yeah. yeah. He says, but don't give reason to the flesh. Don't give room to the flesh. He says, for all the law is fulfilled in one word, even this. Thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. But look what it says. But if you bite and devour one another, take heed that you be not consumed one another. He said, if you don't live in love with each other, everybody dies. All right. All right. And what good is the church if everybody in the church has always been, you know, we always fight with each other. We can't ever find a room that we can get together. This one likes this one, this one don't like this one. We, I want to be with them. They real, you know, they over there, they phony. Right. See, the real folk got our struggle. The phony folk don't have our struggle. Yeah. But the real folk believe the way I believe in the phony. Yeah. Yeah. Because you, you are attracted to that which is comfortable to you. Amen. But look what he says. This I say then. Walk in the spirit that you shall not fulfill the lust or the desire of the flesh. For the flesh desired against the spirit and the spirit against the flesh. And these are what? Contrary. The one to the other. So that you cannot do the things that you would. He said it goes both ways. The spirit's trying to get you to do something that the flesh is trying to make sure you don't do. And the flesh is trying to get you to do something that the spirit is trying to make sure you don't. But we're so busy focused on one another, we don't see the spiritual implications of everything that's going on. Amen. All right. Amen. But he says, look at this, but be ye led of the Spirit. You are not under the law. Then he says, what, the works of the flesh are manifest, which are what, these? Adultery, fornication, uncleanness, last is that it all deals with control. Mm -hmm. Idolatry, witchcraft, hatred, barriers, emulations, wrath, strife, seditious heresies that deal with dissension or confusion. Mm -hmm. Then he said envies, murders, drunkenness, revelings, and such like, things that begin to take over and overpower your will. Mm -hmm. He says, of the which I tell you before, as I have told you in time past, they which do such things shall not inherit the kingdom of God. We understand the kingdom of God not to be a place, but to be God's principles, God's system, God's family. He says, when you live in bondage, you cannot do things God's way. You can't act like God when you give yourself over to these things. All right, let's go a little bit farther. Let's have some fun tonight. <laughs> Let's look at Psalms 103. Psalms 103. Gonna go the first five verses. And then we're really gonna start. If you have it, say, I've got it. If not, say, hold up. Amen. Psalms 103. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me. Bless his holy name. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all his benefits. Uh -oh. Who forgiveth all thine iniquities, 
who healeth all thy diseases. Verse number four. Who redeemeth thy life from destruction. Who crowneth thee with loving kindness and tender mercies. Who satisfies thy mouth with good things so that thy youth is renewed like the eagle. He says, I want you to see something. Because I want us to take a very real look at our lives. He says, I redeem your life from destruction. How is it that God buys us out of pain that we loan ourselves back out to? God says, I pay the price to deliver you from that addiction. And you continue to loan yourself out to it. When I found you, you were near death's door. I got you. I saved you. I delivered you. I cleaned you up. I let you experience my life. And now you go play peekaboo with the devil. And you flirt with destruction. And hang out with death. He says, how can I buy you? And then you sell yourself to somebody else. How can I buy you? How, how can I buy you? How can I have bought you, the Bible says, with a most precious price? Meaning the blood. He said, I bought you with a price. And how come that I buy you, I take care of you, and yet you still run back? It's just like the woman who goes back to the man who gives her black eyes. But there's something wrong with the one that loves and cherishes her. How come that you run to the problem, but you run away from your answer? How is it that he gives us everything that we need, but we'll run to the one that won't give us nothing? How is it that, Adam, I give you a garden? I supply all your needs in the garden. I have everything that you ever need. I put in the garden a tree of knowledge of good and evil. And I put in the tree, uh, um, the tree of life. And I tell you, Adam, you can eat off every tree. <laughs> but that one. <laughs> that one tree. Look at how I set you up. You ain't working the ground. That's right. You ain't watering the ground. That's right. Everything you get is being handed to you. And all I tell you, Adam, live under control and don't touch one tree. And then Satan comes up, beguiles Eve. Eve in turn goes to her husband. And now they eat off the tree that God tells them not to eat off of. How is it that you got somebody that adores you right now, but you spend all your time talking and texting who don't? Because he's beguiled you in believing that it's going to give you a benefit that's not there. Well, you know, I, I'm going I'm to I'm, I'm leave her this year. <laughs> you know, this is going to be the year I'm going to leave her. She's he been telling you that for the last five years. Oh, help me. I, I'm, just, I'm, I'm, just, I'm, te- I'm telling you, this is, this is it. And your life is slowly fading away. Yeah. While they're having 
you know, one of my friends called me and said, you know, Charles, what you think about this? He told me, I got a friend, I got a friend, you know, that who's been dating this guy from New Orleans for a number of years, but he says that um, he, he only comes down once a week and all this stuff. I said, he married. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> all right. That, that, that's all that tells me. He's married. And I wish she has, she has caused herself to be deceived into thinking it's something that it's not. See, there is no greater deception than self-deception. When you cause yourself to believe a lie. I can quit any time. That, 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 that alcohol don't control me. Well, don't drink none today. Well, I don't want to stop today. Because <laughs> if you have the power to quit, that means at any moment I can challenge you and you can move on. Amen. <laughs> yeah. You know. You know. And I, I was in the store the other day. I was in Kangaroo. This girl went and she had quarters and dimes and nickels and all this on the thing, buying her some cigarettes. Mm -hmm. I was looking. Oh. <laughs> Look at this. And then she buys the cigarettes with change she scrapped up. Then turn around. Can somebody give me two dollars for gas? It took the Father, Son, and the Holy Ghost to just let me walk out. Because right. I'm thinking, how deceived are you that you will spend what you have on cigarettes and may not can make it home? All right, let's. Let's make it a little bit more real. How many of us, how many of us right now are giving all our time and energy to things that can't get us home? You get off work, you got to stop at the corner store. You got to go to the quick stop. Got to go get you, yo. 12 out, 16 out, 24 out. Some of y'all old school, you're 40 out. And you say, well, well, this is just what I do. No, you in bondage and don't realize it. Yeah. Every time you get a little extra money, you got to run down to the boat. Oh, I told you we're about to work up here. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Every time you get a little extra money where you just start putting it down slave, you just, you just, you just pass just something. I just got to put that in there and I just got to pull that slot machine because, cause, Pat, you just don't know. Pat, I just made hit, baby. It's a business. It's a business. They, in the, they ain't in the business of making people rich. They in the business of making money. So I'll let you hit every now and then to get the next sucker to come back in. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Bondage. Bondage. I see people, uh, well, well, it's just too cold. I, I'm just too cold in church. I would stay up in here, but it's too cold. Then I see them outside smoking cigarettes. <laughs> Oh, let's have a conversation. Let's have a conversation. It, 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 it's 14 below zero, but they outside with their cigarettes about to die. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, 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 yes. But you want to tell me that you are okay. Oh, no. Yeah. See, we got to be honest and say, you know what? I got some stuff going on right now in my life I got to deal with. I got to deal with it. I can no longer put my head in the sand hoping for it to go away. Why? Because if you won't tell yourself the truth, 
I know you won't tell me the truth. If you won't tell yourself the truth, I know you're not telling your kids the truth. If you won't tell yourself the truth, I know you ain't being honest on your job. Amen. Yeah, you know. You go to work and clock out there and take a break. Clock in and take a break. <laughs> Some of you right now following your taxes. Got about four kids on there you said been living with you for the past 12 months. <laughs> oh, we're going to talk. We're going we gonna to talk. We're going to talk. We're going to talk. Why? Because if we're going to be people that God wants us to be, we must be honest in all things. Amen. Amen. I got to live. But what, but, what, but, but what's really going on? See, what you see is not the actual problem. There's something underlying in my spirit that has to be addressed in order for me to begin to progress in life. For the weapons of our warfare what? Not carnal. But they are mighty through God to the pulling down of what? Stronghold. So I must find the spiritual reason why I am acting out this way. I must find out that we call the people, oh, I got kids in here, garden tools. I just don't understand why they can't get themselves under control. But I don't know about the molestation she's faced. That's right. That's right. That has tainted her spirit. Yeah. And while I'm judging her action, I don't know the cause of her Amen. problem. Amen. But I'd rather judge the action than deal with the cause of the problem because if I, if I get and have to deal with the problem, I may have to spend too much of my time. Mm. That's right. All right. Amen. I may have to be committed to something that I may not want to deal with. I may have to embrace somebody that mom may not normally want to embrace. Because it takes a whole lot to get to know somebody, but it just takes a moment to judge them. And it takes more effort to find out why people do what they do instead of just sitting up there and saying, you wrong, you need to change, I don't know, she just a hooker, she or whatever, instead of getting to know and say, find out what has happened in her life. It's easy to get on our religious highs yes, and be self-intoxicated yeah. in our own self yeah. instead of getting time out and say, God, I know what I deal with. Lord, help me to relate to her pain. Right. Yeah. Help me to relate. Help me to relate. That's a good something. That's a good something. I'm talking about getting free. Somebody said, I'm going to get free. You know, write this down. He said, 2 Corinthians 12 and 9. He said, and he said unto me, my grace is sufficient for thee. For my strength is made perfect in weakness. Most gladly, therefore, I rather glory in my infirmities that the power of Christ may rest upon me. Write this down. I need to acknowledge my weakness. I need to acknowledge my weakness. I need to identify things that get me all of behavior. I can't identify you. I need to identify times that get me out of behavior. I need to identify around this time of the year because I've experienced trauma that I have not dealt with and I've experienced pain that the church folk just told me it's going to be all right. No, somebody needs somebody to talk to. 
Because we can't ignore somebody's hurt telling them, baby, God's going to take care of you. Yeah, I know God's going to take care of me, but sometimes I got to let it out and tell somebody, it has hurt me right now. I'm in trouble right now. I got pain right now, and I need some relief. So much we ignore stuff. And we tell folks stuff and we lie. Baby, I'm praying for you. You know you ain't praying today. Nevertheless, you ain't praying for them. Amen. Stop giving people weak saints. Hold on, your change is coming. Yeah, but you don't know I'm contemplating suicide. Are you telling me my change is coming? But the devil's got them with some pills. I need they pill. One of the most real calls I had, I met somebody. Never seen them before. And they, 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 they called themselves. They started talking to me. And I said, baby, you need to get those pills on your pillow. And they looked at me like, how you know? I said, it ain't me. But God knows. And he wants you to live. Right. Well, I'm mad with God. Okay, that's our conversation. God ain't scared that you're mad with him. Let's have a conversation. God always let the ones I love leave me. I said, oh. He does. I love him and they in jail. They locked up. Why God took them? I said, baby, God didn't take them. God just like me. God gave me a word for you, and I could have chosen to deliver the word or keep it. And my choice affects you even when you don't know it. I said, so while we're getting angry with God, you must understand everybody in here has a choice. And you must understand that God, even though he wants you happy, he's not going to violate somebody else's will to make you smile. Amen. Amen. He wants them to find out that they make you happy. Then they, and when they know they make you happy, now they make choices that will make your happiness sustain. Amen. But if they still make a choice to do something else, God is not going to stop them. Amen. Amen. No, he's not. God, we know what's happening. We want all our kids at home right now. But God is not going to violate your child's will to put a smile on your face. Oh, help now. He will do what he can to draw them in, to bring them in. But at the end of the day, they must come of their own free will. And we must get delivered from the aspect of life that we put our faith, we put our joy, we put our strength in everybody else but ourselves. And I said, I know you've been hurt. But I said, don't let the hurt that you face cause you to miss out on some of the best years of your life because you're living in a place of what could be and what might have been. Yeah. Why are you living there? Some of you right now living in what could be and what might have been. Yeah. That's why some men don't get in relationships. That's why they have no problem going sleeping here, sleeping there, and sleeping wherever. And making babies along the way. And won't live up to the responsibilities of the choices that they've made. Because they won't want to have an aspect of their life to say, you know what? Now I have done it and now I have to raise up in it. I done made this bed. I have to do what I do to make it better. Not saying you don't, can't get out of it. You may have to work a little harder. You may have to struggle a little longer. But you got to at some point in your life look at yourself and say, I am better than what I have been doing. But until you be honest with yourself and say, Lord, I'm weak. I'm weak. 
the backdrop of the story is that, Lord, I got a thorn in my flesh. I got an addiction. I got a pain. I got something I want to get rid of. And he prayed. And God ain't take it. And he prayed again. And God ain't take it. And he prayed again. And God didn't take it. And God said, I'm tired of you praying. So let me give you a word about your situation. My grace is sufficient for you. In other words, if you let my grace, you let my unmerited favor in your life, I won't remove the thorn, but I will take away its effect. All right. Thank you. Oh, yeah, I take away its effects. They'll be wondering, how can you have that in you and you still on top? Oh, see, see, that's what you don't understand. See, 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 God does not just want to use people that he removes the stuff out of. No, God wants to remove people that you right in the midst of it, but it ain't working the way the devil thought it was going to work in your life. He thought you were going to give up. He thought you were going to run away. He thought you were going to throw in the top. But he said, my grave is sufficient. I got the thorn in my side, but it's no longer poison. It's in my life. Then he says, my strength is made perfect in weakness. In, in, in other words, God says, you are able to identify my power when you no longer can handle where you're at. Oh, somebody help me, Holy Ghost. Yes. You can identify the power of God when you no longer can handle what's going on. Because when you can say, Lord, I can't handle it, God, so I'm going to show you in the midst of where you are how much strength has been on reserve, but you could not tap into the reserve until you acknowledge, Lord, that I've been living on empty. I've been living on empty. How many people been living on empty? All right. You tired, you go through the most insane thing. You get up, you get up, you go, you do your stuff, you lay back down at night. It ain't nothing new, it ain't nothing exciting. You just go through the motions. Why? Because you're living on empty and you have not told God that I'm on empty. But when you wake up and you say, God, I am tired of this pattern, I'm tired of this routine, I'm tired of this Monday stuff going on in my life. Lord, I need some help right now. I forgive all your iniquities. See, I tell people, I, 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 well, you don't stand, God, don't, you know. Uh, I just went out, I just messed up. And I've been trying, Lord, I just messed up. And every time I try to do the right thing, I, you know, and, and I'm trying. God knew you were going to mess up. And he ain't tripping. God ain't surprised. God ain't surprised that you went to Wendy's and they gave you your order with a bad attitude and you cussed them out. <laughs> God was not surprised. He wasn't. I know. Yeah, he wasn't. God was surprised when you said, Lord, if you take me out of it, I'll never do it again. And he brought you out of it. And two weeks later, you did it again. He wasn't surprised. He wasn't. Because he knew you were lying. He knew that you wanted some temporary relief. Yeah, he knew. So he said, I'm not going to trip. Because you have not admitted that you are empty. You know, me, I drive all the time. And I, I, sometimes I don't even look at my gas needle. Mm -hmm. You know, and I was driving home last night, and I looked at my gas tank, and it said 11 miles left. <laughs> look, 
It was always there for me to see. The car would not have been surprised. <laughs> if I would have ran out of gas. Because the car was letting me know that the gas was leaving. I would have been shot because I did not pay attention to the warning things that have been given to me. Oh, see, somebody missed it. Somebody missed it. Somebody missed it. Somebody missed it. See, 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 God is not surprised when you get to empty when he's been warning you with a still small voice. Don't answer that phone. Don't answer. You know what you're going to do when you answer that phone. Do, don't you know? Don't, don't, don't talk to him. Don't text him. You need to leave him alone. You need to block him out your life because you know if you get on the phone with Johnny or you get on the phone with Sally, you know where you're going to end up. And you know after you do it, you end up feeling broken, you end up feeling empty, you just feel all these bad emotions, so stop doing it. But God said, you've been ignoring me, so you end up answering the phone and just say, hey, baby, can we get the hotel in a couple of hours? And you say, yeah, because you know you need your life to be a pain, and you trust Johnny more than you trust God, so you say, I'd rather go with Johnny, so I'm going to feel bad when I get finished anyway. And God said, I'm trying to get you to identify your life and identify what's going on. Help me, Lord. God said, I'm He says, because I forgive all and I heal all. In other words, when I forgive you, I take away the effects of what it meant to be in your life. I take it away. That's why I live. I live. So people, I, I be in my own little world because I don't trip. People come to me and be like, I don't care. You know why? Because they tell me stuff I can't change. So why I'm going to about something I can't change? Well, so-and-so said this about you. Okay, who cares? I really don't. You know why? Because if that's how they feel, that's how they feel. I can't live my life trying to change their mind. Yeah. The only thing that I can do, or oh, help me somebody is be the best person I can be. Yeah. And if I'm the best person I can be, I don't care if they hate me, but as long as I can look at myself in the mirror and say, Charles, that will work you do good. You've done what you're supposed to do today. You love who God wants you to love. You help who God wants you to help. And you've been consistent in following me. Yeah. 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 Why? Write this down, John 8 and 32. I got to admit that I'm weak. Yeah. Number two is in John. And you shall know the truth. Yeah. And the truth shall make yeah. you. Amen. You know why? You know why people don't like the truth? Because truth really hurts. It hurts to find out the one you love don't love you. But it'll set you free. It hurts to find out that the job you want and that spent the last 10, 15 of your life helping to build up, hire somebody younger than you and you train them, then they give them the supervisor role. It hurts. It hurts. It hurts. It hurts to find out your place in some people's lives. Yeah. But he says, but when you find out the truth, <laughs> it shall <laughs> make you free. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. In, in other words, it gives me liberty now to be me. Yeah. <laughs> I'm going to be free. So now I find out that you really don't like me. You know, I've been trying to take you out. <laughs> you know, take you out to a couple of nice restaurants. You know, been trying to talk to you and all that. And I done found out you don't care for me. You done made me free. Well, what, what you mean? You ain't get what you want. Yeah, but I got what I needed. <laughs> Don't get caught up on what you want and then stop saying, Lord, give me what I need. Yeah. 
Because when I find out that you don't want me like that, it frees me to leave you alone and say, Lord, show me the one that I need in my life. And that's what's going on. Lord, show me why. Because I can make a change. I can be different. I can go where I need to go. Lord, give me the truth. I hate yes people. I hate them. I hate yes people with a passion. Because <laughs> sometimes when people just tell me yeah all the time, I just want to say shoot yourself and see if they say yes. Because <laughs> I don't understand. It ain't no way that we are two people and we agree all the time. <laughs> ain't no way. I need somebody who don't care about pastor, who don't care about lawyer, don't care about none of that, who will look me in the face and say, you tripping. The reason some of us are still in bondage ain't nobody told us you got a problem. Yeah, those cigarettes, they are problems. That alcohol, they are problems. Right. That sleeping around? Yeah. That's the problem. Yeah. Making all these babies and you don't want to take care of none of them? That's a problem. Yeah. Right here, I promise you, you know, we might have a lot of problems, we might have a lot of problems, but I promise you, you will not have no problem with nobody making no babies in this church and I'm not addressing it. Amen. You know why? Because too many people turn their heads. But you know why? You don't know why? Because I know churches that got pastors in the church that got kids in the church they ain't never recognized. So you can't challenge another man to be a man when you ain't a man. Oh, see, 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 just have a conversation. Let's have a conversation. See, if you are not what you're supposed to be, it's hard to challenge somebody else. Send people a dog, lung cancer, emphysema. But you gotta, you got to smoke those two packs a day. <laughs> you get up in the morning, first thing you do, you get you a cigarette. I got to grab that marijuana. You know, I get that black and mild. I pull that tobacco out. I don't know how they do it, but you know. I've seen it a couple of times. You know, <laughs> you know and be honest, it's a problem. It's a problem. It's a problem when you need that. And some of you, you know what I'm saying, if you could be as faithful to God as you are to your cigarettes. <laughs> your jeans in your back pocket, <laughs> your buckle, you faithful. You know it's that change. Now, now, this is what I want. Now, don't go to that store because it's going to be 75 cents more at that store. I want you to go over here because when you get over here, I can get this and this. So I... Because when people want something, they'll find a way to get it. When they want something, they find, that's why I don't let, I don't like people that, well, I, I try, I make this and whatever. No, if you want to do it, you'll do it. I don't care what you got going on in your life. If you want to be better, you'll find a way to be better. But until someone tells you what's going on in your life is killing them, then you got to look and evaluate. Oh, man. I mean, I got to cut some stuff loose. Amen. <laughs> you got to go buy you your lottery tickets. <laughs> your quick pit. <laughs> your power bar. Straight in the box, you know. Yeah. 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 You know. I'm up in the stove. One day, you know, I'm looking. And I say, this is why people stay poor. Mm -hmm. I'm saying this one by twenty dollars worth of lottery tickets, and don't win on one. Yeah. 
I just, you know, just scratch right there. Just scratch. I'm like, hell, but you should have kept the 20. Because that was real money. <laughs> No one told you the truth that even if you win the lottery and you go nine times out of ten, you're gonna be broke in about three years. Because if you give money you ain't prepared for it, kill you. Amen. Somebody said, Lord, I want to be rich, not yet. Not yet. Yeah, instead of having that little corner weed, you're going to have some weed flowing in from Jamaica. <laughs> Direct it to your house. <laughs> oh, hey, I can hold it on. I told we're going to talk about some real stuff. We're going to talk about some real stuff. You know, it, 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 instead of, uh, you know, you're going to be taking a tour of the Budweiser plant. Because you ain't ready. Because you ain't been honest about who you are. I'm just gonna say, tell me the truth. Tell me the truth. Tell you the truth. You ain't bold, you're messy. Come on. Tell me the truth. You're a liar. I can't trust nothing you say. Some people tell me something, I do the opposite. I don't trust nothing. Not nothing. You know, that would make jokes about lawyers. They'd be like, you know, when a lawyer is lying, you know, his lips are moving. That's how some of us are. You know how I know when you're lying? As soon as you start talking, you no, know, don't, can't trust nothing. You come out your mouth. You got to tell them. You got to start telling everybody else they're a liar. You got to look at them and tell them, you a liar. Be honest. Stop the madness. That's what's killing some of our kids. We ain't tell they got the change, buddy. Mm -hmm. I told the kid, I know where people like you go. Mm -hmm. I told him, I know. You you bad? I know where people like you go. There's two places and you don't want to be in there one of them. I said, either I'm gonna be saying ashes to ashes mm -hmm. and dust to dust. I'm gonna be before the judge. Your Honor, we'd like to withdraw our plea against the plea of not guilty, right. to plea of guilty. Mm -hmm. End up in jail. Yeah. But you bad. Yeah. You ain't bad. You're a lost little boy trying to find out what it means to be a man. Amen. But you ain't have nobody who was a man in your life yes. to show you. So you do all this stuff because you have the, the body parts to do it. And that makes you a man. No, that makes you an animal. Yeah, we got a lot of animals in here. Because I just don't understand. I just, every now and then, you just don't know. I just have to do me. Yeah, <laughs> yeah some of y'all say yeah. Some y'all, some y'all go months with it. Out doing some stuff. But you get an urge, you have to find out how to be under control. You're not free. You're not free if you avoid it. For a season, you must avoid to gain the strength. But true deliverance is when I can walk amongst it. It is no longer affects me. Let's look at this. I got. I got to get us out of here. <laughs> Psalms 51. I must not say I'm weak. I need some truth. Then I need God, number three, to do his work in my life. Psalms 51. It says, have mercy upon me, O God, according to thy loving kindness, according unto the multitude of thy gentle mercies. Look what it says, blot out my transgressions. Wash me thoroughly from my iniquity. It cleansed me from my sin. Look what he says. Yeah. For I acknowledge my transgressions. And my sin is ever before me. Look what he says. Against thee and thee only 
have I sinned and done evil in thy sight that thou mightest be justified when thou speakest and be clear when thou judgest. Behold, I was shaped in iniquity and in sin did my mother conceive me. Behold, thou desire truth in the inward parts. And in the hidden part, thou shalt make me to know wisdom. He says, I have to let God cleanse me. I have to let him come in and move me in my life. I have to. I have to understand that he has to wash me. I'm not doing it to make you feel better about me. But I'm doing it because now I must feel better about myself. I must look in the mirror. And I got to learn to love what I see. So Lord, I need to be free from this pain and destruction. You know, some of us right now, you've got to get in and say, Lord, I need you to cleanse me. That's why I challenge some of you to bring your cigarettes and your liquor and whatever else you got going on. Some of us got things that are not tangible. Pride. Arrogance. Just know everything. Can't nobody tell you nothing. Got things that you cannot touch, but people can feel it. Mm. And we need to be honest and say, God, I need you to make me clean. Because I got to break free. Mm -hmm. You're in bondage when you do not realize and you do the same stuff Mm -hmm. and they know how to get you. Mm -hmm. And they know what to say. That's why I don't want to be a bunch of church junkies. You know, I know church junkies. They just got to come to church and get a good service and go out. And it it, it makes them immune for a minute from their life. Then they hit with reality again. Then they come back and get another hit. And they go back out. God said, no, I don't want no church junkies either. I need somebody to say, God created me a clean heart and renew a right spirit within me. You know, tonight someone needs to say, God, I need you. I need you, I'm weak. I need you, God, I need the truth. And Father, I need you to wash me. I need you to move in my life. Yeah. Want to talk to somebody right now? It ain't going to always be easy. Amen. Listen to me. Let me tell you tonight. You can leave cigarettes in the altar tonight. will not stop you from going to buy some tomorrow. Amen. 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 It will not stop you from leaving here and going to smoke a cigarette. You can put look at this altar. It will not stop you from going out and buying you another drink and getting drunk. You can put it right here at the altar. But God is saying, I need someone to move in my life. Because this is what it's all about. You know it is. I'm about to call for it. I like it better like that. Because you need to say no. Yeah, this is imitation, but I left my real stuff home. I didn't want to bring no real weeds, church. You know what? I'm going to buy another one. <laughs> you know why? This is just a sign. 
saying, God, I'm tired. I'm tired. I acknowledge I'm weak. I need the truth about my situation. And God, when you tell me the truth, I will let you do whatever is necessary to cleanse me. Some of us do not have tangible things that we can place on this altar. But we need to realize we're about to see something. Never before. Someone has pride. Someone has an angry spirit. You just snap for no reason. You just guy. He was like, how you doing? Why are you asking me how I'm doing? Just angry. Why you want to know? Just angry. He didn't say, Lord, I need a change on the inside. Got so much going on. And you know what the call is today? You know what they ask me? Lord, I don't want to. Time to go back. Because what would happen to your life? Mm-hmm. Oh my God. There's $5 a mm-hmm. oh my God. I just said most of us smoke on average two to two and a half packs a day. lay some stuff at this altar. And you need to say, God, I'm getting a fresh start tonight in the name of Jesus. Everyone standing in this place, you know who you are. You need to make your way to this altar because God is here. So move in your life Make a symbolic offering of releasing what's been plaguing me. And you need to lay it on this altar right now. Because I told you, you're not going to be bound any longer. You're not going to be free any longer. You're not going to hold on to that. That's fine. That's far enough. Because you're going to you're born to see that no more. No more. And this is not a good sign that I 
am no longer going to be tied up. I'm no longer going to be wrapped up. I'm no longer going to be in bondage to cigarettes, to alcohol. I'm going to be free. I'm going to be free. And I want you to keep this on you. Yeah. Put it in your wallet. Put it in your purse. And let it be reminded every time you go that I'm going to be free. I'm going to be free. I am going to be free. So I want you to give it. I want you to just begin up this end and just line up across the office. Because you're going to walk in the place that God wants you to be. Hallelujah. I told I was a promise this year. I'm not living to eat. I'm going to eat to live. I love to eat. I love to But I don't love that food more than I love arteries that good. I love food, but I don't want no water. I love it. Don't want no high blood pressure. Amen. So I said, God, you can have to help me. Have mercy, Lord. 